Hello guys, today we are going to cover very important concept of programming of C++. We are going to study basic concepts of OOP. Well, first of all, uh, I need to open Python. Mm -mm. Yes, we yeah. are. OOP has few very basic uh, concepts and also very important concepts uh, these concepts are encapsulation to hide data polymorphism poly means same a morphism means shape we make a template and use at it different places and abstraction to hide data inheritance to inheritance to inherit functions or data members from parent class to the child class to learn these concepts to get the approach of these concepts we will see first definitions few definitions first definition is of objects uh, objects basic unit of OOP that is both data and function that operate on data are bundled as a unit called an object now listen carefully there are instances of class which have data members and uses various member functions to perform tasks that's why we call it instance of class because they instantiate the class there are three access specifier public private and protected keep this in mind this slide is in blue keep this in mind very basic and very easy concept the second one is class when you define class you define a blueprint for an object this doesn't actually define any data but it does define what a class name means that's what an object of a class will consist of and what operation can be performed on such an object. Class can be defined as a user-defined data type, but it also contains function. So class is basically a blueprint for object. It declares and defines what data variables the object will have and what operations can be performed on the class object. Basically, we perform a number or whatever op operation we want in the functions and then and the functions are present in classes so basically class are uh, defined you it actually acts as a, as a unit for the functions to perform different operations the next example will clear both the classes and objects here is the okay it's the basic syntax of c++ it's a keyword it's a class name it's a class name which can be anything it can be your name as well it is the access specifier it's a data member and it is access specifier uh, here in this function it's actually a function with data type void in this function we are setting data however in this show data function uh, we are just showing the data and this whole class is act is acting as a unit uh, and these uh, okay keep this in mind the data member is present in private private access specifier because we don't call the data member outside the class but we do need to call the function outside the class in the main in this mean in i am talking about this question in this we are we need to call the function outside the class in the main function so we are putting these functions in public uh, access specifier okay okay here is the instead of any data type we are using class name it can be anything again uh, these are both objects and with the help of objects we are calling the uh, functions uh, which are present in public access specifier if uh, they were in uh, private uh, access specifier we would not be able to call this function we are putting value here we call it call by value again we are putting value inside this or uh, we call this way of putting value call by value there are other way of call by reference or whatever again we are with the help of these objects of uh, small object class we are calling show data function uh, and the result would be uh, whatever put it is in okay uh -huh. result uh, okay the result would be 1066 and 1766 
for each object. Should we run this? Uh, if I run, what has happened? Okay. Sorry. setting data with this variable so okay we need to put columns okay keep this in mind i did the same mistake don't do this okay again we are oh damn okay 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 i will put this outside class we are making object with the class name small object dot S1, S2, S1 dot put data with 1056 and S2 dot 2100. Okay. Again, if we show S1 dot show data. S two dot dot show data. Okay, if we run this program, then the output will be like Yes, yes, you can see the output is this. Okay. So moving ahead, encapsulation. Encapsulation is placing the data and the function that works on that data in the same place. While working with procedural language, it is not always clear which function works on which variable but object. OOP provides you framework to place data and the relevant function together in the same object. It can also be said that a binding encapsulation is all about binding the data variables and function together in the class. Abstraction Abstraction refers to providing only essential information to outside world and hiding the background detail to represent the needed information program without presenting the details. Here you can remember the access specifier usage, okay? We can say that abstraction refers to showing only the essential features of the... We put some variables in the uh, private in order to hide the data, okay? Feature, um, we can say... We can say that abstraction refers to showing only the essential features of the application and hiding the details. For example, a database system hides certain details of how data is stored and created and maintained. Similar way, C++ classes provide different methods to outside world without giving internal details about these methods and functions. The next is the most important topic, inheritance. One of the most useful aspects of OOP is code reusability. As the name suggests, inheritance is the process of forming a new class from an existing class. 
that is from the existing class called base class and the new class formed is called derived class this is very important concept of hoop since the feature helps to reduce the code size inheritance is a new way to reuse code once written code again and again the class which is inherited is called base class and the class which is inherits is called derived class so when a derived class inherits a base class the derived class can use all the functions and the data members which are defined in the base class hence making code more reusable these are the table for access specifier and usability with the public we can access uh, the data member whatever functions uh, outside class drive class uh, in drive class it is uh, accessible and accessible outside the class and in protected we can access outside the class uh, even the data members are accessible in the drive class and the objects outside class no we cannot access with the protected however uh, in the private we can only access data member data function in the class and it, um, it they are not accessible not anywhere outside the class okay third example small example for inheritance okay here is the structure for class in the void set weight function we are setting the value uh, setting the data and in setting set height function we are setting height and here is the uh, variable data members in the protected okay here is the derived class syntax class rectangle colon public shape shape is the name of parent class or base class and the, we call this thing derived class again we are making object from for the derived class and calling the function of base class or parent class like set width is present in parent class and set height is also present in parent class but we are calling it from the object of derived class or child class and again calling the function of derived class host this clear the next concept is coming as polymorphism the ability to use an operator or function in different ways in other words giving different meaning or functions to the operator or function is called polymorphism poly refers to oh sorry many okay i was asking same but it actually refers to as many there's a, that is a single function or operator functioning in many different upon the user is called polymorphism it's a feature which let us create function with same name but different arguments which we will perform differently that is function with same name functioning in different way or it also allow us to redefine a function to provide its new okay i'll tell a different a bit easy definition okay later in the tutorials but I hope so it's clear overloading the concept of overloading also a branch of polymorphism when the exciting operator function is made okay i will tell you the different better definition actually we use overloading because in the classes we cannot use arithmetic operators to perform arithmetic operations on class objects unless they are overloaded for example you cannot use the plus operator to add two class objects uh, two class objects okay also we cannot use any relational operator to compare two class objects for equality however there are only two operators which we can use our member access uh, operator and assignment operator uh, however we cannot use any uh, addition multiplication or other relational operator but with the help of our loading we can use all these operators inside the class the next and last concept is exception handling Exceptional handling is a feature of OOP to handle unresolved exception or error produced at the runtime. time. Exception handling is a process of responding to the occurrences during computation of exceptions, anomalous or exceptional condition requiring special processing, often changing the normal flow of program and execution. We use for the beginning, we can, we, I tell you that we use try and catch word here, okay? So here is the end of it. That's it. If you like my tutorial, don't forget 
to subscribe my channel because it's the way to encourage me to make even more better or to make even more tutorials download my c++ app to check your knowledge of c++ and download my java application links of both apps would be in the comment section don't forget to like share and subscribe i try my level best to teach you guys even more better i know that most uh, number of guys don't even understand the proper definition but don't worry with the e with the time passing you will learn each and everything keep on watching the tutorial keep on learning